Okay, this is a quick demo of um, Open Drone Map. I've installed a web Open Drone Map server in uh, Johannesburg. Uh, so what it does is it lets you upload images and then processes all the drone data. So I've been processing all the drone data we've collected so far. So for instance, if you look at Tanzania, I've got a farm near Kilimanjaro and a country office that's been processed. Uh, if you look at Mozambique, I've got Pequenos Lebombos where we were earlier the year, uh, their dam wall as well, and the country office. Uh, Madagascar, I've done quite a few. I've got the Mantisua airfield and a burst dam wall, which was a double grid flight, as well as the country office. Uh, to show you what the what the outputs look like, uh, you do get the ability to download all of the different types of items. So you can have an orthophoto and geotiff or PNG. You can also have point clouds or textured models. Uh, let's show you what the map looks like at the moment. So this was a dike that burst in Madagascar. Um, basically it was a wall that was fully built and houses on top of that and somehow it burst through and let all the water flow away. Uh, you can see the difference in quality between what would be an open street map or a Google Earth map and the drone maps. It really is quite significant. Um, this is a 2D model, but you can do some useful things with a 2D model. Uh, for instance, if we wanted to know what the volume of this house was, Let's go and get a measurement. We can say, okay, let's go and figure out what the volume of this house is. I'm doing it a little bit untidily at the moment. Finish. So that house occupies 34 square meters, perimeter is 25 meters. It's busy calculating the volume. It does the volume by taking the difference between a surface model and a terrain model. Okay, so the volume of that house was 48.77 square meters. Uh, this could be useful, for instance, if you needed to know uh, more or less how much earth you would have to bring in to cover this. You could go and basically take a measurement of, of a piece of this ground over here. Let's go and do a small chunk. Okay. So again, we can see the perimeter and the area. Okay, so that section of Earth is 300 cubic meters. Now, I know I've gone from more or less that point to there, so if we had to do, let's just go and remove this one. If we have to go and do a distance measurement, which is about from there to there, we could say, okay, so five meters of this ground is about 300 cubic meters. Uh, so now all we need to do is measure how much is missing. So it's missing from about here. So there, we can say, okay, so there's 78 meters missing. So we'll divide that by five, um, which gives us about 16. So 16 times 300 is about 48,000 cubic meters of earth that needs to be replaced over there. Um, obviously, we can also see the surface model, which includes the houses. You can see all of them over there. Uh, the water is obviously all of the same height, so it groups a lot of it together. And you can also do the terrain model, which tries to take the houses out of the picture. Um, then what else can we do? We can go and view this in 3D. So the first item in 3D is a point cloud, uh, which is not great quality to look at, but it does give you a nice rapid interface to look at these things. So we can zoom in. Uh, you've also got some neat little tools in 3D. So you can, for instance, let's go and work out what the angle of this roof is. And click there, click on top, and click on the bottom. And I can see that the angle of the roof at the top is 106 degrees, which is quite neat. Um, what else? Uh, you can work out areas. Um, we've done that already. A number of different things. Uh, the one I like, though, is the textured model. Now, it does take a long time to load, so I've preloaded the textured model here. Again, it looks like an image, uh, but it isn't an image, it is actually 3D. So you can see the angle from the side, which I think is pretty cool. It's fairly good quality too, especially for swimming on the web. You can go and inspect the houses a little bit. But you can see exactly how, how far that, that soil was eroded away. Uh, pretty neat. So to give you a quick indication on how it works, 
Um, we go back to the dashboard. I'll take this one back. And let's say I wanted to do some new drone mapping. Um, I can either create a new project, which is these outer categories, or in this case, I'll just create a new task on, underneath my testing. Uh, one of the things I can show you before we get there is it does give you an indication of how long it took to map. So, for instance, my damn wall was 418 pictures, and it processed in just over four hours. Now, this is a, a small virtual server. It's only running about six gigs of RAM, so it isn't very quick. Um, you should get significantly better speeds if you've got a, a better quality. Anyway, so let's get back onto this new task. I'm going to go and select some images. So I did a quick mapping flight in Ethiopia. We tell it to open. I'll call it Ethiopia test mapping. Um, I've predefined a couple of options here. Um, I do one for small data sets, which is high quality and one for large data sets, which I've set at medium quality. Now, this is 69 pictures, so it's not a lot, so I could do it at high quality quite easily. Um, there are a number of other settings you can play with, but I've basically predefined the ones that work for us. And all you do is say, start processing. So the first thing it does is it transfers the pictures from my computer to the server. Uh, fortunately, they're all internal to the network now, so it doesn't take long at all. And once it's done that, it goes and um, starts the processing. We'll see that soon. And I hope after all of that that the, the presentation was recording. I'll check just now if I've wasted my time or if it's actually been working. Okay, nearly done. Now, obviously, having it on an internal network means it's nice and quick and easy to use. Um, if we had a very high-powered server somewhere like in our headquarters, uh, it would obviously take a bit longer to upload the images, but it, would be, it should be significantly faster in processing, especially if we can get one with a huge number of cores and a lot of memory to do all of this. Okay, so the images have uploaded, and it's busy starting to do the processing. So these are the steps it takes. It resizes. Uh, if it can resize and upload, I've left it by default to keep it the same. I do shrink the images for the medium quality uh, from normally 4 by 3 to 2 by uh, 1.6 or so. And once it's done that, it's going to load the data set. It goes and works out all of the, the points that occur on most. It does meshing, texturing, georeferencing. And it basically produces all of the products you need without any interference. Uh, if you go to the console, you can actually go and see what's, what's happening in the, in the background there. So at the moment, it's just pulling the photos across, and it's about to go and start doing its calculations. Uh, I'm not going to make you watch all the calculations. It takes probably this is going to take about an hour, um, but it just goes and does it in the end, in the background, so you can carry on with what you're doing. Okay, that's about the end. Let's see if I can... Let's see if that recording was recording. <laughs>